Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.7.1 released today on all iOS 16 supported devices that are still on iOS 16. iOS 16.7.1 is out to everyone around the world at the same time and is available for the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, iPhone 10, all the way up to the latest iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. Since it was never available for the iPhone 15s, you had to start with iOS 17, you won't see it there. But if we go to settings, then general, then software update, and you haven't installed iOS 17 yet, you'll actually have the update available. Now, if you've installed iOS 17, unfortunately, there's no way to downgrade as this particular update has no files available other than for the iPhone 8, 8 plus and iPhone 10. Apple has not made them available, but if you're still on iOS 16.7 or earlier, you'll be able to install the update if you want to stay on iOS 16 and stay current. Along with this, Apple also released a bunch of beta updates with iOS 17.1 Beta 3, WatchOS 10.1 Beta 3, and many others. I covered one of those in an update video already. Maybe I'll cover some others in a different video. Now, this particular update varies in size depending on what device you're upgrading from and what version you're upgrading from. So on the left, we have 408.9 megabytes. On the right, 5.13 gigabytes. It just depends on the overall update you installed from. So on the left, I had 16.7. On the right, it was 16.6. .6, so it needs to reinstall everything. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 20H30. That just lets you know you're on the current update. And this particular update does not have a modem update in it. So if you're on iOS 16.7, you shouldn't see a change with that. As far as features and changes, well, the only thing Apple tells us, and this is a previous one, so this is not an accurate update. As you can see here, it actually says this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. So it's not necessarily even a bug fix. The one on the right here actually is showing me iOS 16.7's updates for some reason. But this is not even a bug fix. This is actually just a security update for all users. And we can take a look at what those security updates are by going to Apple's security support website. Website. Now, as you can see, we have iOS 16.7.1 and iPadOS 16.7.1, which is all out as well. And you'll see here that we have previous updates. Basically what this updates is the same security updates as iOS 17.0.3. So if we go back here, go into this, You'll see we have one for the kernel, the underlying code that runs the operating system, and then WebRTC. And for kernel, it says a local attacker may be able to elevate their privileges. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.6. They fixed it where the issue was addressed with improved checks. So they fixed that along with WebRTC, where it says a buffer overflow may result in arbitrary code execution. The issue was addressed by updating to library VPX 1.13.1. Both of those have been updated and then they give credits to those who have found it. Other than that, that seems like that's all that's in this update. They haven't said bug fixes or anything else. They've just mentioned security updates in general. So this is basically just a bug fix. I haven't seen any changes with notification center or anything like that. It's still a little bit glitchy as far as bugs, but in general, I wouldn't expect overall performance to be affected in any way as it's just a small point one update to fix security issues. So if you're on an iPhone 10 or anything else, it's available now. Now, as far as overall battery performance, it will take a few days to measure that, but let's go ahead and take a look at what the battery health is like on this iPhone 11 Pro Max, since we haven't checked that in some time. So if we go to battery health and charging, and one thing I would love to see, you'll see this one is actually recalibrating, which is nice, but we're at 93% battery health. I would love to see the new optimized battery charging options that we have on iPhone 15 devices. There's no reason we couldn't have that where we can limit the overall charging to 80% or maybe just see our overall cycle count in about. That's something that we have on iOS 17 when we're on the latest iPhones. So we don't have that for some reason, on this device, but if we bring in the iPhone 15 plus, you'll see under charging optimization, we have the option for an 80% limit. There's no reason we shouldn't have that yet. And hopefully they bring that in the future. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.7.1, well, I absolutely would, especially if you're planning to stay on iOS 16. We don't know how long Apple's actually going to be updating this. So if there's another security update with iOS 16.7.2 or 16.8, we don't know if it'll actually come to other devices such as the iPhone 13 Pro or 14 Pro. 
Pro. Hopefully Apple continues to give people a choice there. I wish they would give them a choice to be able to downgrade as well, but it seems like right now you should be able to install that. And I wouldn't worry about performance. We'll check benchmarks in a moment as I ran them before and we'll run them after. Now, as far as future updates, well, we've been having a lot of bugs on the latest iPhones where apparently some people are experiencing a Wi-Fi issue now. And also sometimes the phone isn't even setting off the alarm. If you have an alarm set and it's just rebooting at night, that's on iOS 17. So people have actually been experiencing that. My own daughter didn't have her alarm go off and she's on a public version. I had the same problem and I'm on a beta. So there's definitely some issues there. We need a public version released also to fix some Wi-Fi issues. I would love to see iOS 17.0.4 address some of those issues, but we may not have it until iOS 17.1 is released, but either way, we still have a couple days left in the week. Maybe we'll see that as soon as today, maybe this week, or maybe not until next week or until 17.1. I do expect iOS 17.1 beta four or release candidate as soon as next Tuesday on the 17th. Based off of that, we could see a final release on the 23rd. That's basically around the same time frame we had iOS 16.1 release to the public as well. Then we'll move on to iOS 17.2 and future updates. But either way, I'm glad to see Apple's updating iOS 16.7 still. Now, as far as benchmarks, like I said, I ran it before and the overall heat of the device is fine now, but I ran this before. Let's take a look at our CPU benchmarks here. You'll see CPU history. I ran this before installing the update and I, I was on iOS 16.6. So let me go ahead and run it now and see what we get. Geekbench completed on the iPhone 11 Pro Max and we have 1,740 for single core, 3,925 for multi-core. If we compare that to what we had before I installed the update, it's pretty close. It's about 39 points off for single core, a little bit slower there and a little bit slower for multi-core, a couple hundred, but that's not too big of a deal as usually give it a day or so, and it will be the same or faster. That's typically what happens right after you install the update and run benchmarks. It usually will be a little bit slower as it's processing a lot of things in the background. And considering I had to install the full update with this, it's going to take a little bit longer to process all of that information. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier was that we do have a new AirPods firmware update to version 6A303 for both AirPods Pro second generation with USB-C. There's also a case update here and also lightning as well. No other AirPods seem to have that update and it should have some bug fixes and more. If I should cover that in a separate video, let me know in the comments below. And so that's everything with iOS 16.7.1. Not a whole lot there, mostly security updates. Let me know if you've installed it already. Are you sticking to iOS 16 for a while? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link the wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.